So I waved him goodbye, gave him a little kiss on the cheek, and said, I'll see you later, honey. And off I went to enjoy a whole new adventure, something I had never done before. I was so excited and so thrilled that I was going to be doing this, as well as a little bit scared that this was the journey that I was going to embark upon. Little did I know <laughs> that my husband got so jealous that he almost jumped off a bridge. I'm going to tell you about the story when we shifted things around. I've been telling you many stories about my first time MFM and exploring with my husband and we had many, many different kinds of explorations together with other guys, other couples, events, all of these different kinds of scenarios, but always together. And at the same time we were spending a lot of time together, he was taking the opportunity to go off on his own every once in a while. He had these MM desires. So I said, okay, I don't mind you doing that. I mean, I have boundaries. <laughs> My boundaries were I want to know where you're going and I want to know all the details after. So we had to work out those little boundaries and I let him go off and do his thing. So that was fine. And then together, we would go out and explore and have so many great adventures together and, and, and play out our fantasies and really dive into our deepest desires. But at one point I was feeling like this is a little bit, you know, not weighted so much on my side <laughs> and it's kind of weighted very heavily on his side. He's getting to go off and explore on his own and having all sorts of different kinds of experiences. And yes, I am experiencing and exploring as well with him and it's a lot of fun and it was really exciting and I loved it and it was always very fun to have it with him. But I was feeling like I am not able to expanding my own sexuality here. He's always there. I don't have the opportunity to really just see how I might operate on my own. What might come out of a situation where I'm just going by myself. Now I had never done anything on my own for those 14 years of marriage that we've been together. And so it was something that I was quite nervous about, but I really felt like this is something I need to do. I feel like I need to balance this off a little bit, one, and also I just wanted to have that opportunity to go and see what it would be like to do it on my own. Well, <laughs> I knew he would not be happy about it. Now this happens often in relationships where one partner is very happy to be the one to uh, do all the sexual exploration, but they don't really want their significant other to do anything. They want their significant other to just be with them when they're exploring and not have them go off and do anything on their own. It's scary for them. It's uh, They have uh, lots of jealousy juices bubbling up, right? And I knew that he was not super happy about that. He was a very dominant guy and he didn't want me to really have that freedom. So I had to think about how am I going to do this in order for this to work out so that he's going to feel comfortable and I'm able to go then and explore on my own. Now I had opened up the subject at one point and I said, wow, I would really like to maybe do something on my own. That might be really exciting. And I could see his reaction. He just became very stiff and Mm, I don't know, like, what do you mean? How do you want to do that? And I said, I don't know yet, but I feel like it's a little bit uneven here and I want that opportunity to, to have my own personal explorations, to, to see what it's like to, to be on my own, to do my own thing. But he was nervous about it. So <laughs> I had to think about this for a while. How am I going to make this work so that both of us are comfortable with the situation? I think it's really important that you work with your partner and just because it's out of balance and one person does one thing and the other person um, does another thing, it doesn't mean that you are exactly in the same kind of journey, the same kind of um, emotional, you don't, it doesn't mean you have the same kind of emotional ability to handle what's going on. 
So, and also our desires are sometimes very different in a couple of them. One person might have a certain kind of desire that they want to play out and the other one is willing to play with them, but they might not be willing to do other things. So you have to work it out with your partner and find a way that it's comfortable for both of you. I think this is so important. I don't at all think that it's right that you say, well, you're doing it, so I want to do it, so I'm going to go off and do it and see you later. We're different people. We come from different backgrounds, different belief systems, different un understandings about what sex is all about. And we all have to work through these different processes that we have, especially if, you know, this big umbrella of jealousy. So I wanted to try to keep things comfortable, as comfortable as possible for both of us. So I came up with a plan. <laughs> you got to, you got to hear this plan. You're going to love it. And, um, yes. Yeah, so since he was kind of entering into that dominant stage and he, he really liked it. He liked to be in that dominant, um, figure. And, and I was, I was happy to be this, this submissive as well. I, I, it gave me the opportunity to, to dive deeper into my feminine and the dominant stage gave him, um, ability to dive into his masculine energy. So I thought, how can I play out the dom feminine aspect here and then still get to be able to do what I, what I really want to do right now? I thought, I've got a perfect idea. So I proposed this to him, that we try it out and um, see what he thought. I was very nervous going into it, as we all are when we want to talk about sex to our partners. Even when you are someone who explores a lot, there's always new desires that come up and it's like, ooh, how do I bring this forward to my partner? Are they going to accept it? Are they going to like get angry? Are they going to freak out? Um, can I even say it out loud? Now, if you, if you are having problems talking to your partner about sex and in any place that you are right now in your sexual exploration, listen, I have a PDF for you with a whole bunch of questions that you can ask your partner. If you would like to get that, go to the first link in the description below and grab that PDF. It'll give you lots of ideas of questions you can sort of start a conversation with your partner. So anyways, um, before you start the conversation, before I did, I made sure that we were in a place that we were both like really calm and comfortable, that we were both um, in a situation where we, we usually have conversation and we're not, there's, there, there, that we're both, that we usually have easy conversation and that there's no disturbances whatsoever. And for us, it was usually going on a walk in the forest because this is something we really like to do together. So I brought up this whole new plan with him in the forest. And I said, listen, you know, I would really like to do some of my own exploring. So I have a really interesting idea that you be in control of this, okay? You be like the dom that sends me off to have a little play date with somebody else. I will play that up with you and you can even call the guy and say she's coming over if you want and have that direct connection. And then I will, you know, I'll be in that, that role play scenario where I'm the naughty girl going off to have a little um, naughty event and you are the one to be, that's gonna be in charge. So I revealed this idea to him and he had a big smile on his face. And he really loved it. He was, he was, I can still feel like he was like, okay, well, yeah, yeah, I, I like this. I think I could do this. This sounds kind of fun. So <laughs> I said, okay, I, I think this is going to, this is going to work. So let's do it. And, and he said, well, who do you want to go with? And for me, now again, everybody is different. He didn't have any problems hooking up with random guys having quick little events with them, little explorations, and then never seeing them again. Um, and for us as a couple, we, we, we would usually meet somebody first, um, always, actually always meet somebody first, have a coffee or a drink, then decide if we both like the person, and then we would make up another date where we, could, we would get together and then we would have a play date. But for me, I did not like the idea of just like, calling someone up and hooking up with them, some random person. I really wanted to make this an event where I went with somebody that I felt really comfortable with already, that I already knew. So I suggested, well, there is somebody that we have seen a number of times. This is potentially a person that I could do this with. And he liked that a lot as well. 
So we were now both on board, both excited, both happy with the situ situation, both happy with the type of role play scenario that we were going to carry out. Um, so the day came and I got all dressed up. He had talked to the guy about sending me over there. Um, he treated me like the naughty girl going off. Okay, you know, I want you back at this time and you have to let me know what you're going to be doing and let me know when you get there. And I said, okay, no problem. Yes, daddy, I will do whatever you say. <laughs> and it was fun. It was really fun. A role play scenario. So off I went and had my little experience, which was amazing. <laughs> And it was very different than I expected. Um, and actually, with the particular person that I chose, he was someone that had been with us in a threesome a number of times. And I really liked his energy. I really liked him as a person. He was really kind. He was a very gentle guy. He, you know, was a mature guy. He was, you know, it was just sort of a perfect scenario. And, and we had, we're kind of emotionally on the same page. And it was just a very nice, gentle connection, very slow, very... Uh, just very lovely and easy and I learned some new things about myself and I was able to just kind of let go and enjoy without my partner being there I always enjoyed it when my partner's there always 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 but it was very different being on my own now I could let go in a different kind of way so I learned things about myself I gained a lot more confidence in my own sexuality and um, I just felt that it was something that could really enhance my relationship. So I went back after saying, I'm coming back, I'm all done. Oh, you get back here right away, he says. So I come back, he's he's like pacing around the house. Um, I say, hi. And immediately he wants me on the bed and you know, he's taking care of me right away. Uh, which was fine. I was I was so excited and heated up and I was just so so dying to be with him and so you know I always felt so grateful that I was in a relationship where I could play these kinds of things out so grateful that we had a partnership where we allowed each other to to try new things to discover new parts of ourselves and yes sometimes it was emotionally very difficult okay open relationships are not always easy or certainly not easy at times uh, there's new emotions that come up there's these beliefs that we have from our, our our growing up and our past and societal beliefs that we hold on to that like look at us look at us and throw I, I throw um, throw negative things at us like what are you doing this is this is not something you should be doing you're a mother you're a, an older woman you shouldn't be doing this kind of thing so it gave me the opportunity to to breathe into my own space and realize that I can make up my own decisions and my own choices about how I want to live my life. So I came back and we had a nice reconnection and he wanted to know all the details which I told him and he got really turned on again and I got turned on and you know this scenario of me going out that one time um, propelled us for a few weeks into really amazing connection. And then he told me, um, <laughs> I said well what how was your day how was your I was gone for about three hours how was your time when I was gone and um, he said well it was really really hard for me really hard I went for a very long walk while you were gone I just had to get out of the house I didn't want to be around you know I just couldn't stay still basically I had to get out of the house I had to move my body and, and it was just this emotion coming in. It was just raging through me, like so powerfully raging through me that, you know, I was not there. I didn't have control. I didn't know what was going on, you know. And I was literally at the top of the bridge at one point and that rage was so intense, I almost felt like jumping off the bridge. <laughs> and I was like, what? I couldn't believe it. Like, seriously? It was that intense of you? I, I was really quite shocked. Quite shocked. Um, but, yeah, that's what happens. That's what can happen. He said, I was able to calm myself down, come back. And, you know, but I felt like, he said he felt like he'd gone through this really dark tunnel of of rage, of, of, of losing, losing me, of the possibility of losing me. 
And in my mind, in my heart, I just felt when I came back, I felt like even closer to him. I felt like I loved him so much more. I didn't want to be with anybody else. I didn't want to have a marriage with anybody else. I wanted him. He was my number one soulmate, connection, lover, everything, you know. And again, like I said, I felt so grateful that I was with somebody that I could explore like this, right? But he had to go through his thing. and. Um, that one event that he went through was so powerful that it really helped him uh, later in other times that we played out the same kind of a scenario. He was able to calm down more. We, we elaborated the role play into different, in different types of scenarios to make it even more fun. And if you want to hear more stories in more detail about my adventures, then join my Patreon account. I tell a story every month that's uh, true and about my, my um, explorations. And I like to get into what, what I was doing and the kinds of details that, that were part of it because I want to break the taboos around, sec around sexuality and, and around relationships and around how we can really support each other in exploring deeper in who we are. I know that jealousy is a massive, massive problem that we are all dealing with. And some of us in just little tiny ways, almost nothing. And some of us explosive where we can barely function that our jealousy gets so intense. I mean, I'm a, I'm a relatively jealous person, actually. Yes, I am. <laughs> and I have to have boundaries up and have to have certain controls around in order for me to feel comfortable in the scenario. Um, but I've also worked through it a lot. And it's it, I've seen what happens when a partner is able to expand in their, their own growth, in their own sexuality, and be able to enter into their desires and play out their desires and how it brings us closer together and we get to know each other at a deeper level and we love each other more deeply you know it just i've just i've seen it and i felt it and i know how important it is in a long-term relationship to allow this type of exploration to take place i would really love it if you comment below about your own jealousy situations are you a very jealous person or not jealous at all and if you are very jealous where what has happened to you that has made you really jealous what did you do how did you feel let's talk about it on this site here i think jealousy is is something that all of us feel to a certain extent and it can really inhibit us from allowing ourselves to do anything or from our partners to do anything you know jealousy can get really out of control where the point to the point where you know your partner's looking at your phone checking your messages doesn't believe anything that you say and where is that line of freedom and controlling somebody right i mean we come together because we love each other that we want to be together we want to spend a, a you know a long time together so if we're doing that, we need the other. Uh, we need our partner to be free, to be able to talk to whoever they want, to be able to connect with other people, both sexes, to be able to enjoy their life apart from us. And it actually is so much more productive when they are able to, because they learn all sorts of things about themselves, about other people, and they they bring back that information to the relationship. Um, and you know, even you know, when you get into sexual exploration then they learn more about that and bring it back to the relationship, right? And then you grow as a couple. So it's really, I think it's really important that we learn to expand and start to let go of this, this jealousy concept and, and sort of veer more towards compersion, which is the opposite of jealousy, if you don't know. Compersion is that um, where you actually feel, have really good feelings for your partner who has other connections with other people of various sexes <laughs> so it's something to work on so let me know what is your story and and what you're up to and if you want any deeper help i am a coach and a healer around relationships and sexuality book a call with me and let's have a chat i look forward to seeing you again very soon much love making